and welcome back. In this tutorial, we will continue using server actions to implement a delete feature on our to-do list. And then you're gonna do some refactoring so that you can learn some of the best practices when using server actions. Code with Sloba. Before we implement our delete feature, let's do some refactoring. Instead of creating server actions inside of the file where we create our components, we can actually extract them in a separate file where we can store all the actions that we have inside of our application. To do this, let's go to the utils folder and let's create a new file here. So let's create a new file and let's name it as actions.js. Inside of this file, as we mentioned in the previous tutorial, on top of the file, you need to use declaration use server. Once again, if you want to use server actions inside of a separate file, you need to declare use server on top of the file. But if you want to define them in a file where you want to use them, then it's enough just to use the use server inside of the function where you create them. So just make sure that you understand this concept. So inside of the file that we just created, once again, I added the use server. And now let's create this create task function and extract it here so it can be used in various places. So let's create a new function and let's name it as const create task. And this is gonna be asynchronous function. And inside of this function, we will receive a form data and we can make it as a camel case. Inside of our create task, we can copy what we have in the to-do form. So let's just copy this entire part and let's just copy it here. And let's make sure that we have the imports for the Prisma and for the revalidate path. So let's go and copy this from here and let's just paste it on top here. And now in order to use this create task in other files, we need to export it. So export this task and let's save this. And now we can use it inside of our to-do form here. We can remove this function entirely and we can even remove these imports because we don't need it. And now we can just auto import this create task. Let's just auto import the create task like this. So make sure that it's imported on the top and this is all that we need. So the only thing that we have done, we have moved this server action from this file to a separate actions file where we're going to create all the server actions that we have inside of our code base. We can create a new server actions from these to do's and instead of accessing here all the tasks that we have, we can create a new server action. So let's do this. So here inside of our file, let's create a new action. So let's name it as const get all tasks. And this is gonna be asynchronous function. And inside of this function, we can just copy the code that we have inside of these to-dos. So let's just copy this Prisma call and let's just paste it here. And now the only thing that we need to do is to return this await function here. Let's save this. And now inside of our to-dos, we can remove our Prisma call here and we can just call our function. So get all tasks. And once again, make sure that it's imported here. And also we can remove this unused import for Prisma like this. Let's save this. And now let's see if our app still works as expected. So let's say that we want to add new tasks. So let's buy coffee. And if we click on create task, we can see that we are adding and loading tasks as previously. So nice. Now let's implement this delete feature. So let's first implement our delete form button. So inside of this delete form, we want to implement a delete form. So why we call this a delete form when actually this is just only a button? The reason for that is because we're going to be using the form similar to what we did in the create form tutorial. So let's remove this div as we don't want to use the client components if we want to do everything on the server. So here, let's create a new form. And inside of this form, once again, we will have an input. But this time, this input is just going to be hidden. So we need this input in order to access the value from the form. So let's create a name. As we discussed, the name is a required attribute. And in this case, it's going to be an ID and we need to provide a value and value is going to be an ID. And the ID is going to be the parameter that we're going to get once we call the delete form. So we're going to get it here. Now let's close this input field. And next to this input field, we want to add a button. Let's add a button. And here we just want to say delete. Let's set a class name. So actually it looks like, like a button for deletion. So button dash XS and button dash arrow like this. But this is essentially just a submit button. And now what we need to do is we need to define a server action and we can call this action once we submit this form. So let's go to the actions and let's create a new task. So export const delete task. And once again, this is asynchronous function. And here we're going to get the form data and using that form data, we're going to access the ID. So let's open the brackets and inside of the brackets, let's access the ID from form data dot get ID. And once again, this ID is from the delete form name here. Okay. 
So make sure that you assign this ID to this function. And now let's use Prisma to delete these tasks. So let's await for prisma.task.delete. And inside of the delete, we need to provide where and we need to match the ID. So instead of saying ID colon ID, we can just omit the second part because name of the property is the same as the name of the variable here. And now let's revalidate the path, same what we did on create new tasks so that we can see the changes on our page. So after this await, let's add revalidate path. And with this, we have created our delete task. Now we can use it inside of our delete form. So here inside of our form, let's add event handler for action and we can just call delete task. And once again, make sure to import the delete task. Let's save this and let's just refresh where we are using this delete form in the first place. So inside of our to do's component, we are calling this delete form component and we are passing in the task ID. So this is the ID of the task that we want to delete. Then inside of the delete form, what we are doing is we are creating a form here and we are calling delete task action. And then you're passing in the form object inside of this function. And if you go to the delete task, we can see that we are accessing the form data from the parameters and then we're accessing the value of the get ID. And then we're just calling the Prisma task to delete this. And after this delete method is done, we're just revalidating the path so that we can see the changes live on the screen. Now let's see if this works as expected. So here we have this delete button that we created. So let me just refresh the page and let's say that we want to delete this by coffee. And as you can see, we have removed this task. So if you go to the Prisma Studio, let's just see if this is in sync. So if you refresh, we can see that we only have this buy banana and buy milk. And let's say that we want to add a new task by cookie. And so now we have buy cookie, buy banana and buy milk. And if you go to the Prisma Studio, let's once again refresh. So we have these three tasks and let's remove once again so just to make sure that everything works as expected so let's remove this by cookie and usually in real life application you want to add a prompt to ask if you want to delete the task or not so in the prisma studio let's refresh and as you can see this works as expected one interesting thing about this approach is that our page is completely static and it is running on the server so this means that we don't need JavaScript at all in order to perform this on the client so if you go to our browser and if we go to the inspect Let's access the settings and inside of the settings, you can access the disable JavaScript feature here in the debugger. So let's disable this. And now let's see if we go and try the action that we can perform and if it works or not. So let's close the console. And now let's try to add one more task. And as you can see, this works. And if you try to delete this, this works as well. And this is all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one. And if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more videos like this, click here.